Because God wants to know how, uh, you can't just say you love me without having to go through something to prove it. And Satan will test us as well. Amen. Let's move forward. Our, our statement, our, our big idea, the big idea is this. In order to pass your faith test, you must study for the exam. In order to pass your faith test, you must study for the exam. Now, I hope this uh, thematic statement, this big idea, this phrase grabs your attention. Because uh, in order to really understand its meaning, we just want to explain this real quickly. First of all, it says, in order to pass your faith test, to pass. Anybody ever been, you know, we've all gone to school. We've all gone, some of us have forgotten more than some people know, amen. We've gone all down to school. Remember when we were in elementary school and uh, middle school and junior high and high school, how we were tested? And sometimes the teacher would come in uh, to the class and the students would come in and they would say, pop quiz, pop quiz. And people would begin to be frantic because they weren't prepared to take the test. Well, we know that temptations are going to come, so we should prepare ourselves. This statement says pass, uh, you want to pass this test. So if, if you don't pass it, then what happens? You fail. If you don't pass, you fail. So we need to understand that if you don't pass the test, you're going to fail it. And if you fail the test, guess what? You're going to take it over and over until you learn to pass the thing. So sometimes God teaches us and sends us through things in order to teach us a lesson, to teach us something. Then other times, there are things we go through that aren't even for us. Amen. Sometimes we go through things to help somebody else coming along. But no matter what, the tests are going to come. The next part of the statement says, your faith test. So what God says here is if you're going to study, you can't study my exam to pass your test. I can't study your exam to pass my test. Everybody's going to be tested individually. You can't cheat, and especially where it relates to uh, going through trials and tribulations, you can't cheat and get out of your storm earlier because God may have a purpose for bringing your storm. If the enemy may be sending you through something, but if we are going to understand that every test that we go through, we have to take a test. Nobody else can take your test. I can't take your test. You can't take my test. Your neighbor can't take your test. You have a test that you have to take. Now, you have to study for the exam. What does it mean to study for the exam? Remember when we were uh, in school and we wished that we had the answers to the test that we were going to take before we took the test? Well, God has all the answers to every test we will ever face. God has a solution for every test we will ever go through. So wouldn't it be wise of us to ask God and to commune with God and to speak with God and have him help us endure the tests that we go through? How do we pass, how do we study for these exams? I wish there were a better answer, but the way that you study for the exams of life is to pass the previous exam. Better said this way, everything we go through in life prepares us for the next thing we're gonna go through in life. Each storm comes to build us and to make us stronger. And sometimes God sends us through some things to make us stronger and prepare us for the next test that's coming. Uh, last week's Sunday, we talked about um, nothing is wasted. And God brought back to my mind that the, the, the meal, the 12 baskets that were left, they were a reminder of what they had previously been through because another storm was coming. So it was a reminder that God got me out of that and this was left over. So instead of focusing on the next storm that's coming, I should look at what's left over and know that if God got me out of that, he can get me out of this too. So God sends us through things as a reminder so that we can prepare us for the next thing that's coming. Yeah. And God takes us from faith to faith. He wants to build our faith and our level. He wants to build our dimension. He wants us to experience him in a new way, in a new light. And 
the way that he does that is through tests. He tests us. Now, some of us, just like in school, we hate taking tests. I don't want to take this test. It, you know, I'm not good at taking tests. But when it comes to taking the test of life, better learn how to take it. Better learn how to take the test of life, because if you don't pass it, you're going to keep taking it until you pass it. So the study for the exam, that symbolizes us having a relationship with God. Some things we don't always understand. Some things we don't know. Some things we wish we could get out of. But God says that as we go through the storms of life, there's comfort in knowing that we don't have to go through our storms alone. Because he is with us every step of the way. The rain that falls on our heads, Jesus is there. The snow that falls in our lives, God is there. When we go through every pain, God feels that he's there with us. Isn't it good to know you don't have to go through your storms by yourself? Amen. Amen. As we look at our text, in order for us to really understand that third verse, I just want to put this in context. So we look, we'll look at the first two verses and we'll soon be out of your way. In this first verse of, of James, the first chapter, I love this about James because he begins, he opens this book up by saying, James, the servant. I'm a servant. Uh, this translation says, James, a servant of God. He said he's a servant. Now, James was also an apostle. He was, one of the, he was a, a disciple or an apostle of Christ. But notice in this letter, he didn't say, James, the apostle of Christ. He says, servant. Many of us want the title, but we don't want to do the position that the title covers. We want the, we want the, you know, the, the lights shining, we want the, the flicker, we want the, the bling, but we don't want to do the job. I would rather be a servant in my Lord's house than to be and to have the titles that the world says. We need to focus on being a servant. No matter what your position is in the church, it's all service. Pastor, the pastor of the church should be the head servant. The pastor of the church should be the deacons, servants. Deaconess, servants. Ushers, servants. Choir, servants. Everybody in the church should be a servant. So don't focus on the title, but focus on service. Amen. I'm going to move on. I know it got quiet. I know it got quiet. Move on. Focus on service. Also in this verse, it talks about how he's writing to the churches that were scattered, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. So why were these tribes scattered? Well, it's because of persecution. When persecution came, the church was basically centralized. But when persecution came, because they were hog-tying Christians, they were burning them on the stake, they were tarring and feathering Christians, and because of persecution, many of them uh, ran from the city. And what the enemy thought was done for good, God, what they thought was evil, God turned around for good. Because when they, when they ran from persecution, it did nothing but spread the gospel. Amen. And so what God says to us today is that sometimes persecution comes so that the gospel can be spread. Amen. So if you think you're being persecuted, look for an opportunity to spread God's word. Look for an opportunity to spread the gospel. And persecution in and of itself is a test of your faith. When you're being persecuted just because you wear the name of Jesus Christ, just because you have a hat with a cross on it, or you wear a chain with a cross on it, and, uh, or you try to live your life like a Christian, and people see that, they talk about you, call you everything but a child of God, know that when you're persecuted for your faith, God says, I'll honor that, I'll bless you. You just go through the fire, go through the flood, because when you come out on the other side, you're going to be like pure gold. Verse 2, my brethren, James says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, or the NIV translates it, many trials. Now, wait a minute, James. Did I hear you correctly? James says here that when you go through, uh, he says, when you go, when you fall into diverse temptations, count it all joy. Now, wait a minute. You mean to tell me, James, you're saying that when they threaten to cut my lights off, uh, I'm supposed to count it all joy when they talk about me like a child, like a dog. I'm supposed to count it all joy when I'm trying to spread the gospel and people talk about me. And I'm supposed to have joy. 
when, when they say I have cancer, I'm supposed to have joy. When, when, I, when I go to the, the grocery store and I can't have, don't have enough money to pay for my groceries, I'm supposed to count that all joy? James, what is wrong with you? You want me to count all my trials, my storms as joy? The things that I go through that hurt me to my heart, I'm supposed to count that as joy? James says, yes, count it as joy. Not for the trial itself, but for what God can work out of that trial. When we go through the trials and the storms of life, when we're going through it, basically all sometimes we can see is the rains pouring. Yeah. We can't see the sun on the other side for the rain that's in our eyes and for the, the clouds that are around us. But God says, count it all joy. Change your perspective when you're going through your storm because when you change your perspective, It'll change your attitude, your, your, your eyesight. When you see things as God sees them, it kind of lifts you from your burdens, from your trouble. Yes, you still have the same bills to pay. Yes, you still have the same groceries. You're trying to figure out how you're going to feed your family. Yes, you still have to do all these things. But when you look at things with a different perspective, God can raise you up and change your mindset so that you look at things differently, which will give you joy. Yes, when you go through uh, dire temptations, many trials, count the joy, not for the trial itself, but for what God can do in that trial. Now, the trial itself does not produce spiritual growth or spiritual maturity. As we come to find out, when you overcome your trial, yeah. that's what produces spiritual maturity and spiritual uh, growth. Uh, the one that God can use the most is the one that God has bruised the most. If you have gone through things for the sake of Christ, know that you're the one that God wants to use. He wants to use you. And the more bruises you have, the more use God has for you. When you're going through your trials, to reflect. And I know, I know it's, difficult. it's easier said than done. When we're going through things, all we see is the pain, the heartache, the struggle, the hopelessness, the depression. But know that God is working it out for your good. What I love about uh, my, one of my favorite scriptures, Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things, good, bad, ugly, indifferent, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. So if you're going through something and it seems like it's tearing you down, know that God's going to use it to work for your good. And when we talk about uh, temptations, falling into dire temptations, it's noteworthy to point out that temptations come from basically one of two sources. They either come from God or they come from Satan. And to make it plain, God tests us, but Satan tempts us. And God doesn't tempt us, but God will test us. But when we think about what they, when God or the enemy begins to administer their tests, they do it for different reasons. They have different motives in mind. When Satan tests us, he tests us to beguile us. But God tests us to benefit us. Amen. When Satan tests us, he tests us to beset us. But God tests us to bless us. When Satan tests us, he tests us to make us bitter. But God tests us to make us better. When we're going through our storms, know that how you handle your storm will determine your altitude and your outlook on life. We're going to be tested. No matter what you're doing, you can't avoid tests. They're going to come. So now that you know they're going to come, know how to handle them. And the best way to handle your storm is to take Jesus with you. Make sure he's on board in your storm. This brings us to our, the main thought for today, verse 3. Knowing this, the trying of your faith work of patience. So what James was knowing this, what is the knowing this? When James spoke this word to his audience, he knew that everyone in the audience had gone through a trial, a storm, they were going through something. And as I look over the house today, uh, just as James did thousands of years ago, 
I know that somebody in this house is going through a storm. If you're going through a storm, just, just say amen by raising your hand. If there's something you're going through, amen. Some of us are going through two or three storms, and it seems like the night will never end. But I've come to give you some, some courage. I've come to let you know that God is with you in the midst of your storm. He will never leave you, nor will ever forsake you. So that ought to be some good news to let you know that you don't have to ride through your storm alone because God is with you. And not only is he with you, but when he comes, he brings everything you'll need to help you get through the storm. Now, God can cause your storm to stop immediately, or he can allow you to lay in your storm for a while. And somebody may be asked, well, how long is the night? Well, God says that it doesn't matter how long the night is. Just keep trusting him. I know it's not easy. I know it's difficult. But no matter how long the night is, keep trusting him. Because he, he says, I won't leave you. If, 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 what's the worst thing that can happen? <coughs> Many of us would think the worst thing that can happen to us is death. Is that really so bad? Speaking from a human person, now let's be honest, let's be real. Speaking from a human standpoint, uh, I can truly say that I know that where I go after I die, I know I'll be with God. I know that I'll be with God. And that's probably him calling right now. That's probably God calling. Lord, I'm not. Um, I, I know I'll be with you, but I'm not, I don't want to go just yet. I don't want to go just yet. Uh, I don't want to go just yet because I believe there's some things still that God wants me to do. But when he does call me, I know I'll be ready to go. But speaking humanist humanistically, nobody wants to die. Did any, did anybody here want to die? Do you just want to die right now? Amen. Nobody wants to die. But let me ask this. Are you ready to die? Is anybody ready to go? If God called you home right now, would you be ready to go? And if you cannot honestly raise your hand, then this time and space is dedicated just for you. How do we know if we're ready to go home now? It's really simple. Sometimes we overcomplicate things. God says, if you believe that me, Jesus Christ, is the Son of God, that he died for your sins, that he was buried for your sins, that he rose from the dead, that he ascended back to the Father, and that he's coming back for If you believe that, now, the belief is not just a head knowledge. Hear me well. The belief is not, oh, I believe it. But it's also a, a, a foot knowledge. You're going to walk it out. What you believe begins to be manifested in your actions. You don't just say, oh, I love God, and you go do everything you know, uh, a godly person would not do. If you know, if you confess that Jesus Christ is your Savior, and you strive to live God's word, his will, and his way, you can rest assured that when you leave here, you're going to heaven. So if you have that belief, and you're striving to please God, don't be afraid of death. Know that you're going to spend eternity with him. And, and, and if that's the worst thing that can happen to us is death, and we get to spend eternity with God, yeah. then, <laughs> that's really not bad at all. That's what we're looking for. That's our goal. That is our aim. We're striving to get to heaven. We don't want to go sooner than we're supposed to go, but we're, that's the goal. That's where we want to go. Yeah. So if that's the worst thing that can happen to us, what about all the other things that we think that can happen that can't, they won't even come? We worry about things that will never even happen. That's, what, that's the part I'm trying to make. We worry about things that will never even happen. So begin to take your focus off your worries and put your focus on worship. Amen. Amen. Verse 3 also is knowing this. So James is saying trials are going to come. You should know this. They're going to come. And why they're going to come. Now I love this verse because not only does James tell us that trials are going to test our faith, but he gives us the reason. He gives us the purpose. He says that trials are going to come and he tells us why. I love this verse because it tells us why. Trials come so that they can perfect, mature, strengthen our, 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 our faith. It can strengthen our, it uses several words here. It can uh, give us more patience. It can uh, allow us to produce perseverance. So when trials come, it produces something in us that 
not having that child cannot produce. How do you know that you have faith? You really can't say you have faith if it's not been tested. Faith has to be tested in order to be faith. So when you go through something, then you can say, I have faith. And what I love about this verse is just the trial itself does not produce faith. Everybody goes through something. Going through it does not produce faith. Overcoming it is what produces faith. Everybody goes through storms. Everybody goes through trials. Everybody goes through tribulations. But what do you learn when you come out of it? Did you, did you succumb to that temptation? Did you fall prey to that evilness? That does not produce faith. But when you push it away and pr uh, pronounce God's word over it, it is written, and you overcome that temptation, then you can say that my faith has been tested, and I've come out on the other side, I'm stronger. Many people go through things and they fall, they falter, they fail, and they think they become stronger. No. It's not when you fall, falter, or fail. It's when you overcome. It's when you succeed that produces spiritual maturity and growth. So don't just say, oh, I'm stronger now because I went through that. But your, your testimony should be, I'm stronger because I went through that and I didn't succumb to it. It didn't take me over. I didn't fall prey to that sin, to that mischievousness, to that evilness. I overcame it. So James is saying this, it's come to strengthen your faith. And I just want to leave you with, with, with this uh, synopsis here. We'll talk about faith under pressure. Uh, just to, to recap and I'll be done. When I read this from the, M the MSG version, which is the message version, and the voice version, it just spoke tons, it spoke life to my spirit. So I want to share that with you today. Uh, the message translation talks about faith under pressure. It says, consider it a sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. Many of us in the house today can testify to the fact that one trial just doesn't come all by itself. Sometimes trials bring friends. Do I have a witness in the house? It seems like you're going through one thing and just about as soon as you, you know, you're just about getting ready to come out of that thing, here comes something else. And then when you, when you get, when you get your hand on that one, and here comes something else. Uh, trials come to make you stronger. Don't focus on the trial. Focus on what God is going to bring out of you while you go through that trial. Amen. They come at all sides. You know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into an open, is forced into the open and shows its true colors, your faith life. There's nothing uh, like being tested because when you get tested, what's in you is going to come out of you. What's in you is going to, if you cuss like a sailor, then when, you, when somebody cuts you off in traffic and you have to slam on your brakes, what's in you is going to come out of you. Yeah. But in, in other words, uh, you might give somebody a bird or you lift the finger up to them. It's not this finger. Amen. When somebody cuts you off in traffic, because what's in you is going to come out of you. God said that if you have enough Jesus, do you have enough Jesus in yourself? So that when the trials of life and the winds begin to blow, what's in you is Jesus and it's going to come out of you. And that's a great opportunity to be witness to somebody because you got Jesus in you. Goes on to say, that shows your true colors. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. How many of us are going through something and wish it would go away? I want this thing out. I wish it would go away quickly. God says, don't try to get out of it quickly because let, let it do its work. So you become mature and well-developed and not deficient in any way. The voice translation says, don't run from tests and hardships, brothers and sisters. As difficult as they are, you will ultimately find joy in them. If you embrace them, your faith will blossom under pressure and teach you true patience as you endure. Talking about patience, many of us desire patience. And when we pray to God, we ask God for patience. We say, Lord, I want patience. And hurry up and give it to me now. Amen. But patience, God says that patience works a perfect work. He will teach us patience through the trials we go through. So when you ask God for patience, be careful because you're asking him to send you some trials. When you ask God to increase your patience, you're asking him to give you more trials. 
Because that's what trials do. When you pass them. And true endurance will equip you to complete the long journey. This is not a, uh, a little race. This is a decathlon. This is a marathon. And cross the finish line. When we're going through storms, all we can focus on is the starting point. But God says, as you go through your storm, know that the finish line is going to come. And at the finish line, I have a blessing waiting for you if you persevere through. Mature, complete, and wanting nothing. Have you been tested? When we go through the storms of life, know that if you call yourself a Christian, people are watching you. They're watching you. And all of us go through storms. How would you go through your storm? We know they're coming. We know storms are going to come. Everybody has to go through a storm. Have you been tested? And if you've been tested, how'd you get out? What, what kind of result did you get when you took your test? Did you pass or did you fail? Because if you fail, you're going to keep taking that test over and over again. Have you been tested? Father, we thank you. <clears throat> we know that, Lord, you, you send tests our way and Satan tempts us. Amen. Father God, we pray that you would equip us and make us able to handle the storms that would come our way. Help us, Lord, to realize that when you test us, you test us so that we can become stronger. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to see that when we're going through storms, Sometimes it gets so dark and it's so cloudy, we can't see the sun, but help us, Lord, to focus and to know that if we are going through the storms and the trials, that you're with us and you're going to help us to overcome. Help us to pass the tests that come our way. And Lord, when Satan begins to tempt us, help us to overcome Satan's temptations. Help us to resist him, and the devil will flee. Help us to trust you in all things. Lord, we thank you for the tests that you send us because we know they make us stronger. And we thank you, Lord, that as we go through these tests that you go along with us. We thank you, Father God, because we know that every test, every storm we go through, this too shall pass. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Lord is not slack for the coming of his promise. But there's no suffering. 